Yo, Muhammad Ali, socialist vocalist, socialist hip hop, for my trade unionists. Let's go. The Ontario we want, the Canada we want, the Ontario we want, Canada we want, the Ontario we want, the Canada we want, the Ontario we want. Canada we want, want. We want. Subscribe to a strategy, survive through a salary That pays you a wage to provide for your family For our daughters and sons, this battle's gotta be won We gotta be one, from indigenous peoples To first generation immigrant peoples There's power here, you're missing it people 10,000 people marching in the hammer 15,000 out in London, 30,000 on the campus in Toronto Cause we meet threats, we can do it Ask a French brothers, we means yes Not wishing for tidal waves isn't an entitlement I don't even wanna have to protect our environment Wanna build an environment where we don't need to protect it You can't Instagram your food on a dead planet Why can't we have jobs and stop climate change? Occupy the factories, base streets, stock exchange Let's go! Let's go. As bonds and equity skyrocket Stagnation hits the wage in my pocket my generation wants an Ontario the better Door to door delivery even in winter weather The Ontario we want has our unions and unity Find the common front through our community Our generation knows what we want for Ontario A better world is possible, yo peep the scenario The Ontario we want The Canada we want The Ontario we want Canada we want The Ontario we want The Canada we want the Ontario we want Canada we want I think what's been really exciting about the OFL's last five years has been the remarkable extent to which it is in the public eye and speaking on issues that are of relevance to workers, whether they're unionized or not. And I think in the 20 years that I've been, uh, you know, an observer of the Ontario labor movement and also a participant, I don't think since the days of action that we've seen an OFL so vibrant, so present on the pressing issues of the day, uh, intervening in key public policy debates like occupational health and safety, harassment, minimum employment standards. And that's the labor movement that I want to see and that I think workers need. Now, I've worked with the OFL for many, many years and the OFL has often been on side on important issues, but SIDS made it way more visible. You know, without the Ontario Federation of Labour, we wouldn't have the kind of relationship that we have in the social movement with, uh, with the labour movement. What motivated me to run for president of the OFL back in 2009, um, I felt that my experience would allow me to be able to rebuild the profile of the OFL and to re-engage with the community, re-engage with government, and most importantly, re-engage with the membership in terms of mobilization. Um, putting people on the streets uh, in some ways uh, helps the agenda overall. I would say what we managed to do in the last six years was bring together a common front and say to these folks, you're our equal partners, your fights are our fights. And I would hope in return that they would see the battles of the labor movement as the fight of the community. With the 2014 provincial election, Tim Hudak was knocking on the door and he had a virulently uh, anti-union message. He would have brought right to work in, in Ontario. And uh, the OFL's leadership in mobilizing labor and all progressive forces in Ontario to defeat Hudak as the number one priority of that election paid off in spades. So what laid the context for the Stop Hudak campaign was the imminent threat of right to work legislation in Ontario. Hudak said he was going to do it. It had just happened in uh, Michigan 
And there was a very real possibility, looking at the polls, that a Conservative government uh, could be elected in Ontario and we could have right-to-work legislation come down on our heads. So the big step was getting the mandate from the OFL Convention. And then we set about really rigorous campaign planning and laying the groundwork for really rigorous execution of the campaign. This campaign was different in a number of ways. It was very focused. It was, we did, often there's a temptation, we're gonna go out and tell the whole world, we're gonna target the public. We had a focus on union members. We recognized that a large number of union members vote conservative. So the flip side of that sad reality is we have direct access to a significant block of conservative voters. And there's a wedge issue with that block of conservative voters. They're ben the benefit of union membership and their collective agreement. There's no doubt that we significantly reduced uh, the support for the Conservatives amongst union members. It had been at about 3%. We drove it down to about 19%. This was a tremendous accomplishment and I think it'll have a lasting effect in our movement. The OFL's championed um, human rights and equity issues, in my opinion, over the last few, number of years is by making sure that we reach out to our community groups that it's no longer just the labour movement that's going out there, but in fact that we've reached out to various groups within the community and built a broader coalition when we're doing our work. I think it's the first time that I felt that we have had access uh, to the OFL, uh, but also having a, a true ally, a true labour ally in the work that we're doing, in the fight for social justice and for equality rights. The collaboration that we've been able to have with the Ontario Federation of Labour over the, the, the past few years um, uh, has been instrumental. From not just on the issue of carding, not just on the issue of racial profiling, but on the issue of jobs in particular for young people, um, uh, it, it is commendable. Our work with the missing and murdered Aboriginal women is bringing a voice to them. It's to making sure that they're not forgotten, that their voice is heard, Every time we're out there, we're talking about it, and we have that big voice. Where I think our voice was heard the most was around the shooting of Sami Yatim, and more importantly, all the other deaths that we've had by the police when it comes to uh, people with mental disorders. In terms of, of who makes up uh, labor, is there a lot of racialized uh, uh, people that are part of the labor movement. And uh, OFL and labor has a key role to play in helping us, working with us, being there with us, to bring us together, to be able to respond uh, to some of those very important issues that impact on, on, on racialized people in this province. We've done a good job here at the OFL in terms of our executive board being one of the mo most diverse uh, executive boards probably within any union and across the country. And we've done great with the labour movement, but I don't think we've done enough to make sure that there is equity represented in leadership. And until members from equity groups see themselves in the leadership, that's when they'll start to believe that their issues are being heard. Over the next 10 to 12 years, the majority of the workers that are coming into the workforce are from equity groups. And if we don't try to organize them, we'll fail as a labour movement. And the only way we can organize them is if they see themselves first involved in the labor movement, but also more importantly in the leadership of the labor movement. I think some of the biggest accomplishments that the OFL has, has made uh, in terms of WSIB is that we take on the struggles and bring awareness to the failures and the issues that we're, we're struggling and taking on as not only advocates and representatives helping injured workers and their families, but also bringing awareness to the failures of the WSIB and we're there to help make it right. Everyone has a responsibility in ensuring that um, people aren't hurt on the job. It's something that I think um, in the fullness of time, I think we're going to make progress on this. I think uh, good companies, and that's the vast majority of employees in the province of Ontario, understand that it's no accident that those companies that are productive and profitable are also the safest, are also the ones that take health and safety very, very seriously, that engage their employees, that ask them their opinions, that make sure they've got the right equipment. They're the type of people that I think all employers in the province of Ontario should aspire to be. And a lot of that has come because of the direction that's come from the OFL, the advice that's come from Sid himself as to how to approach these issues. And you have to be firm with it. It's not one you can uh, 
It's not one you can dance around. It's got some very dire consequences if we don't get that right. Uh, we're there every single day trying to fight and lobby the board to ensure that injured workers have the dignity and the respect and the justice that they require to have the quality of life that they deserve. December 24th, 2009, 30 days after I got elected as OFL president, word came across on the news that five workers had fallen off of a scaffold, forwarded them to their deaths uh, in the West End of Toronto. This was a completely and totally preventable accident. We set about at that day and that time putting together a campaign that essentially said to the public and to the employers and even to workers, kill a worker, you go to jail. That has got to be the price that employers will pay for negligence in their workplaces that results in the deaths of workers because every worker in this country has the right to go to work and expect to come home safe in the evening to their families and that's not been happening and employers have not been asked to pay the price when they kill workers or workers are killed on their jobs through their negligence and that's what we said about changing because there needs to be a consequence for all involved when there's a fatality we need to rest assured that, we, that when we do that investigation, that we uncover everything, that we find out what caused it, who was involved, what time of day it was, what the conditions were. All those things, I think, are things that are going to help us prevent those accidents in the future. And if there, I think we, we owe it to injured workers in this province to ensure that uh, we don't leave any stone unturned when we're doing those investigations. And until such times as we begin to see CEOs being marched out of their, out of their headquarters, out of the ivory towers, in handcuffs for having killed workers on the job, unless that happens, we're never going to change the culture of health and safety and value of workers' lives in our workplaces. Well, the Common Front was born out of uh, a, a need for a um, unified uh, voice, a unified movement to include our community partners in, in a much more collaborative, inclusive way. The tremendous appetite that we see at the Common Front at the grassroots level and with the activists, their appetite to be involved in campaigns, to be involved in local issues that, that matter provincially and that can drive the, the progressive agenda provincially. That appetite is so strong and our Common Front chapters provide that place, that place where the activists can work on the ground doing what matters, doing what counts, making a difference. I think the creation of the Common Front came at a real critical time. What we've been seeing now is, you know, Ontario moving towards massive austerity measures and in the face of that, what we really need to do is ensure that unions and community are working together. And that's what the Common Front has provided a vehicle to do that. And I think it's really critical as we move forward and there's more and more pressure on our collective agreements, on the public sector, on um, the private sector to ratchet down wages. We really need you know, a, a way in which community can work together with unions and see the common interest. And that's what the Common Front has done. And when you start to see the Federation playing a pivotal leadership role, working alongside community, I think it really inspires people to build those relationships and to continue that work together. And I think that's even more so critical right now as we face um, some really hard challenges ahead. So we really look forward to working with the Common Front and the Ontario Federation of Labour. The next leg of the work that we have to do to reverse inequality, to bring back decent wages and working conditions for all workers and to ensure that we're building strong coalitions and relationships that can really build a strong movement in this province. When you look at the Labour Councils in Ontario and all the Labour Councils we have, that will tell you the potential of the Common Front. If we have a chapter in all of those regions, then really, let's think about what we can accomplish. The upsurge in activity and hope and mobilizing that we've seen at the Ontario Federation over the last six years uh, has been incredibly important. Uh, it's been really exciting to see some of the great fightbacks that Ontario unions have taken on uh, in the last few years. Uh, everything from challenging uh, precarious work 
uh, challenging the global corporations uh, like U.S. Steel and Caterpillar that are running roughshod over our economy, uh, giving workers hope that by joining together, uh, we don't have to accept this grim reality of precarious work as inevitable. Uh, we can articulate and fight for and win a better way of organizing our workplaces. Well, this place is historic because it was on this very place that the OFL mobilized 30,000 people against the Liberal government when it passed legislation to take away free collective bargaining, the largest demonstration of workers since the days of Mike Harris, and it was an incredible mobilization. And in fact, that's been the hallmark of the Federation of Labour over the last number of years. What an amazing turnout here today! 30,000 of the Labour movement, 30,000 of our friends, and 90 community organisations! Why can't we have a different way of looking at the economy? How about investing in the public sector? What's wrong with some, some infusion of dollars to create jobs? making certain that we've got infrastructure program, green energy jobs that can't be exported to China. Mobilizations to defend workers' rights, whether that be here in the streets of Toronto, aimed directly at the provincial government, whether that be in southwestern Ontario, aimed at for-profit corporations, multinational corporations taking on workers' rights, whether that be in a small northern municipality where only 16 people are on strike. The OFL has brought workers together, mobilized people, built energy in our movement to defend workers' rights and to defend the things that we all need in our communities. Well, Sid is one of those guys uh, that I know that wear it on his sleeve. Uh, there's no misunderstanding when he shows up which side of the, the fence he's on. He's with workers and he's with their struggle regardless of how difficult and challenging it might be. And I think it's a credit to his commitment and his, his, his principle that he will fight and he would engage and more importantly he will challenge. Sid has been a champion for working people, but he's also been a champion for this movement. I think his voice has been rich for movement, have strengthened our movement and more importantly have made our movement better. His heart and soul was about building, of course, uh, workers uh, a strength and strengthening their movement to ensure that the employers and government that want to push us back will not succeed at the end of the day. Jack Layton talked about uh, we cannot just be opposition, we also have to engage in proposition. And in some respects, this is what we're doing. We're actually saying to people, um, out of this Ontario we want, we need to be able to articulate a vision. So it's about engaging the community. It's about diversity, making sure that the union movement is representative of the people that we represent out there from a leadership level. It's about saying to government, um, look, at, we are going to engage you at all levels. Um, we have an agenda. We're not going to be shy about talking about the right to strike. We're not going to be shy about saying we want card-based uh, card certification. We're not going to be shy about saying and championing that we want better pension plans. In other words, we want a better standard of living. We want to be able to share. When the province is doing well, when the country is doing well, workers need to be able to share. In the last few years, the OFL and SID in particular have been everywhere, like any struggle, even on uh, the Palestinian rights struggle, which is a lot of people don't want to take the risk of stepping out in support of Palestine. But Sid always did, because as an Irish person, he had that real strong sense of the importance of defending self-determination for a nation, uh, which Palestine is. Sid and, and, and the OFL have been present in almost every struggle. Any time I'm in the streets, he's in the streets. You know, whether it's anti-poverty, whether it's women's rights, whether it's indigenous rights, or uh, civil rights, like against the police. Sid's always there. And he makes sure the resources of the OFL are there, which has just been incredible. It's tremendously important that we recognize that in spite of you know, some victories that we've won, in spite of defeating Hudak, the corporate onslaught continues. We're not out of the woods by any shape or form. We're not in a period of history where having the best argument and pleading and explaining wins. This is a power struggle that we're in and we have to organize ourselves in new and better ways. And I, I think the, the workers' rights campaign of the OFL was a significant step forward in terms of showing what it is we can really do. The one thing we've learned in the last six years, when the labor movement engages its membership, the grassroots, we can do amazing things. We have proven to the membership and to government that when the labor movement unites, we can win.